Max Fasterfield, and this is a demo of my Quilcom Padulator. The Padulator was designed uh, to synthesize pads, um, but it can do a lot of other stuff too, of course. The principle behind the operation of this um, was described by Nasca Oct Octavian Paul. Um, and this is my take on that, which is really a simulation of that algorithm, because this synthesizer doesn't create wavetables, which are then scanned out. Um, it uses live oscillators to produce uh, a similar effect. The advantage of the approach taken in the padulator is that you can adjust and modulate many of the parameters in real time without having to compile new wavetables each time uh, and thus avoiding clicks when you change parameters and having to press recompile or uh, similar buttons. Uh, the disadvantage of course is uh, it uses a lot of oscillators and so the, the CPU use is much higher. There's links to the information about the uh, algorithm uh, provided in the uh, download file. So I'll just give uh, a quick overview of the synth, although I think most of it is pretty obvious. This is the general panel where you can set the semitone bend range, tuning and velocity response and so on. This is the heart of the synth, which is the generator that actually produces the, uh, the, 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 the sounds, goes through a filter, uh, a volume envelope and here we've got three effects provided or we can switch the view to modulation where we have an extra envelope generator three LFOs and we can use uh, other sources uh, apart from those such as the volume envelope or the filter envelope mod wheel and so on so the generator is uh, basically uh, an additive synth where you can set levels of up to six to 16 harmonics and some high frequency harmonics too. Uh, um, here you can set the frequencies of those harmonics either by entering a number or fine tuning if you want to and uh, shift these values add to these values or spread these values in a nonlinear fashion. The thing that makes the algorithm rather special and somewhat unusual is that each harmonic rather than being just a, a set frequency has what's termed a bandwidth. So there are frequencies either side of that set frequency. So if I zero this and just bring up maybe the second harmonic If I turn the bandwidth down to zero, you hear pretty much a pure sine wave. And then as I increase the bandwidth, you'll hear the other frequencies come into play, causing a sort of warm but irregular beating sound. And then we move into an area of detuning. If I leave that central, this is the slope or the tail off of the side frequencies. So again a pure sine wave and then the amount of the effect is influenced. This is just a stereo width knob. Mono, stereo, extra wide and this is the shift so if I put this into 1 over n which is an approximate sort of click to reset it. I can add to these numbers here. And 
and spread them out non-linearly. Double click to reset to zero. Now if you um, create a shift, for instance, you can still freely enter values in here so you can restore the fundamental harmonic and its second harmonic and third harmonic if you wish. And at any time you can um, return to default. 1, 2, 3, up to 16. And if you detune, zero just the fine tuning buttons, which if they're dimmed out means that they've got no action on the pitch. So if you want to just get that one back to um, zero default, you just double click it. This um, array of sliders on the right hand side of the generator obviously, obviously sets the levels and we can zero them all and just um, the click you heard when I raised the sliders is because once when the sliders are at zero that oscillator section is turned off and it turns on when you raise the sliders so there are four local presets here which simply set the sliders into predetermined um, uh, patterns so one over n as I showed you before gives a saw like sound this is the same with the odd harmonics um, present only and even harmonics and what can be very useful is this randomized uh, button here So you can just keep hitting that if you like until you get something that sounds suitable or interesting. Finally we have two sub oscillators provided to add a little bit of, little bit of depth or whatever to the sound. So if I just bring up the... Sub oscillators uh, don't have the bandwidth of the uh, oscillator sections here, but they're useful for thickening the sound up, I think. Actually, I should also mention that you could mute these individually to see what contribution they're making to the whole sound with these buttons here. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, the CPU usage is quite high with this synthesizer, um, but you do have a recorder down here you can record up to 10 seconds with uh, and use the clips that you save from that. <clears throat> or um, you put the padulator on several tracks, render each track and then freeze the plugin um, to keep the CPU down. I could run five instances of this on my uh, Core i7 machine, uh, playing four notes on each one before the CPU limit was reached. So it's not stupid high, but please don't be disappointed <laughs> that it's uh, it's not as light as a lot of uh, professional synthesizers would be. 
I must say the algorithm comes into its own when you realize that you can modulate the level of any of these sliders with any of the modulation sources. So, for instance, if I go down to mod wheel one, uh, we are modulating the odd and even harmonics in a different direction using the mod wheel. So that's what this sounds like. <laughs> And here we're using the mod wheel to uh, modulate the bandwidth, the slope, and the cutoff frequency of the filter. And what's this one doing? Yeah, this is a different modulation of all the, um, the harmonics and a different pattern set up on the sliders. So uh, the question is, what sort of sounds can you achieve with this synthesizer? Uh, and here I must men mention the wonderful Manfred Plumer, who created a lot of these presets. I'll just switch to full screen, and you can see that from after another big sweep, all these presets were created by him, and a lot of them are really quite remarkable. I, I didn't expect. Um, the synth to be able to do some of the stuff that he managed to make it to. He also very kindly provided a further bank which you can load into the uh, synthesizer with uh, lots more sounds. Some of those sounds I've put into this uh, so-called factory bank. So what I'll do now is I'll just pick it some um, almost randomly and um, y you can have a listen to um, some of the things that uh, the synth can do.
Now this next one uses harmonic modulation, so it's modulating the level of this slider shape with three, sorry, two different LFOs running. Now this is the next one is an amazing preset by Manfred Plumer and I'm just holding down one note for this. <laughs> Now released. That's remarkable, isn't it? I think. Again, just one note. This next preset, I just don't know how Manfred did this, and I built the synth, so there you go. But I'm just going to hold down middle C for a little while. <laughs> just so much movement and stuff going on in there I, I have no idea <laughs> no idea so I hope that's given you some idea of the Quilcom Padulator's abilities and at this point I should like to 
give a big thank you to Manfred Plumer, not only for his amazing range and quality of presets, but also for doing the intro music and the outro music that's about to play. And all this music was made by him using just a quick compadulator. Um, so there you go. So thanks again, Manfred. And uh, until the next time, bye.